Okay. Hello, uh, good afternoon. My name, my name is Francesco Pilla and I'm uh, the coordinator of the BSC in City Planning and Environmental Policy. So I'm just here to give you, a, um, well, a brief enough overview of, uh, of the degree and tell you more about uh, uh, the skills that you learn as part of this degree and also the, the, the teaching approach uh, well, uh, that is used in normal circumstances. So I'll start uh, with, with a video about the degree just to give you a, a very high level overview. Make the choice to make a change. I am passionate. I am about nature. I am excited about the future of our countryside, towns and cities. I am into geography. I am concerned about the future, climate change, homelessness, flooding. I am optimistic about reducing our carbon footprint, making better use of our lands. Conserving nature and building better places for us to live and work. I am inspired by the professional change makers. I am practical. I am a thinker. I'm conscientious. I am an adventurer. I am interested in the planet, people, places, heritage and the built environment. I am community. I'm a problem solver. I am positive. I am positive. I want to make a difference to create a better world. I am integrating understanding with imagination. I am the Bachelor of Science in City Planning and Environmental Policy. I am planners, urban designers, environmental policy experts. I am a change maker and a path breaker. I am addressing pressing global, national and local, social, economic and environmental issues. I am cutting edge research led teaching. I am nationally and internationally recognized. I am career orientated. I am meaningful job opportunities. I am on your CAO. I am DN130. Well, let's say the, the, the video is very good to give you just a, a very high level overview of all the, um, well, the skills that you learn, the opportunities that you have with this kind of degree. So I'll just, uh, I'll just present some slides to go a bit more in the detail. So uh, the, um, the uh, BSc in City Planning and Environmental Policy covers uh, two main uh, disciplines, the uh, discipline of planning and the discipline on, of environmental policy. So it is about uh, um, learning more on how uh, to use uh, land uh, and, and about the design of the environment in a more sustainable way. So there'd be a lot of talking about the sustainable development goals, sustainable planning, use of uh, green infrastructure and so on. Uh, as regards the environmental policy side, uh, it focuses, uh, the, the main focus is on natural processes and on managing basically the interaction between the um, uh, citizen, people and the, the surrounding environment. This is all about basically a uh, preempting uh, projects, uh, bef uh, so assessing their impacts before the projects have been given the, the green light. So uh, as regards uh, the planning side of the BSc, uh, there are, um, well, there are uh, different skills uh, that they be learned as part of BSc. So uh, it's about planning, as I said. So it is about uh, understanding um, how a project will fit in the surrounding environment, uh, see, um, have a vision or what be their, uh, its impacts, and have a vision as, actually on how this uh, will contribute to, um, to the citizens' well-being and so on. It is about making uh, a, a better place. So planning uh, the cities, planning the, the, the rural communities in a way that they are um, fostering um, the uh, engagement and also the 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 um, life uh, live the livable uh, um, surroundings for for local communities. So it is it has it has a very strong focus on local communities on their needs and how they they will use the place and how will, they will perceive it. It is about uh, well, as you probably understand, uh, you, uh, you know yourself. Uh, planning cities, not uh, um, urban environments, is not an easy job. There are a lot of concurrent priorities, a lot of uh, drivers, barriers, and so on. So, one of the main skills that uh, our students will learn is the problem-solving skills. So, um, getting 
uh, presented with uh, um, ill-design problems and try to figure out uh, a, a solution for them while all in the context of planning uh, and um, urban environments, as I said. Um, it is about, uh, we'll focus also on, uh, on transport, so um, on sustainable mobility, on how things uh, move around uh, um, urban and rural environments. So it's not just about uh, people moving, but also last mile deliveries on goods, of goods and so on. And it is basically about uh, uh, providing um, cities, local communities, uh, with, uh, uh, with 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 um, structures, with uh, facilities, with uh, with um, assets that they will enjoy and they will uh, they will improve their uh, their li their lifestyle. Uh, as regards the uh, environmental policy side, it is uh, focusing mostly on the environment. Is focusing on the assessment of the impacts that the local communities would have on the surrounding environment. It is about com uh, tackling uh, com complex problems, which actually uh, with uh, um, uh, climate change, they are becoming even more complex in urban environments. Uh, and it is about uh, formulating solutions which are um, um, focusing on impacts, impacts on the surrounding environment, impacts on the surrounding, uh, on the local communities. So we'll, uh, we'll talk about uh, topics uh, such as uh, mitigation and adapt adaptation to, to climate change, understanding the interactions between uh, green infrastructure or the natural environment and the uh, humans, see uh, actually how um, people can behave in a more sustainable way uh, and uh, uh, lower their the long-term impacts on the on, on climate. So we'll talk about uh, how we can we can go forward for um, so to mitigate uh, the impacts on climate uh, of climate change. It's also about uh, we'll talk about also sustainable um, energy resources and how we can uh, deploy them, develop them still be mindful of our cultural heritage. So we talk about uh, nature conservation uh, and the interaction with the, the renewable energy. Um, well, I'd say, uh, well, in Ireland, a uh, flood risk is, a very, uh, um, is very topical. So that's one of the uh, topics that we'll also cover uh, as part of the degree. Uh, we'll see how this flood risk, might, uh, flood risk might increase and change with climate change. We see also what are the potential solutions. So we, we, we won't talk just about the traditional solutions such as green infrastructure, but we look also at more cutting edge solutions, something that's coming from uh, international research, European research. So the use of uh, what is called a nature-based solution or green infrastructure as a measure to mitigate flood risk. So there are uh, here just to give you a, 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 an idea of the topics and the skills that the students will learn at a glance. Um, how we will do it? Well, uh, in, normal, uh, in normal circumstances, so out of this uh, level five restriction, uh, we'll, we'll do a lot of individ individual uh, and teamwork We'll have a uh, studio, which is still ongoing also in, uh, under these uh, this current restrictions. We'll get uh, students to work together, but also to enjoy time together and to learn uh, new things outside the, the college environment. So we'll have uh, field trips, uh, field trips uh, in Dublin, field trips in other uh, parts of Ireland, but also field trips abroad, if possible. It is about uh, also, the, the old degree is, is, is not just about learning uh, from the academics. So we don't want uh, the students to have um, a skewed perspective of the outside world. So we, we'll en we engage a lot with, also with practitioners. So this will allow to, um, uh, the students to learn 
uh, not just the theory, but also how things are done in practice. So in the real world, uh, we'll, we'll engage, as I said, with practitioner that will give us a perspective of uh, how a job is done and what are the drivers, the barriers, and the, um, and the, um, the, the practical things that st uh, students should learn before they go out in the real world and in, um, to work. Um, we'll learn also softwares that are, uh, as an example, a geographic information system, GIS, which is uh, um, requested by a lot of companies, a lot of consultancies, and also um, by local authorities. So that's a key skill that we learn through the degree. Um, well, uh, we we'll, we'll learn a lot of skills that are linked to community development, uh, so enterprise skills, health and social care, the tackling, tackling poverty, and so on. Uh, so this is just where we will do it. That's, uh, that's the rich view side of UCD. You can see the, the building of architecture, the building of planning and environmental policy, and also the, the research hub, where we will have most of the interactions with the students. So um, there are, um, as um, well, uh, the degree is uh, fully accredited by RTPI um, and the Irish Institute of Planners. Um, it, it is, um, as a follow-up of the degree, we have different kinds of masters. A, which will allow the students to come out as a professionally qualified planner, a urban designer, and environmental policy analyst. A, just to conclude, these are um, the, ca the cow points, a, the duration of the degree, and the, the general intake. Okay, so I'll, I guess I'll, I'll land it on to the next speaker. Perfect. So yeah, hi everybody. Um, uh, thanks for uh, that, Laura and Francesco. Um, so yeah, I've been asked to uh, by Laura to talk to you about my own UCD experience as a city planning environmental policy student. Uh, so I think it's best to start cracking head because I'm only aware that I have 15 minutes to talk and I have loads of stuff to go through. Um, so, just so we can allow you to ask questions at the end. So. Um, yeah, just pop your questions into the chat box, as Laura said, if there's anything that I haven't cleared up properly in my presentation. So, you're probably all wondering, um, like the kazoo kid here on the, on the slide, well, wondering who is this DJ that keeps on talking? Well, uh, hello, my name is Luke Murphy, and I am 20 years old, and I'm from Clondalkin in West Dublin. And as I've mentioned before, I'm on the Bachelor of Science undergraduate degree in City Planning and Environmental Policy. And as Laura has said, I'm in um, my final year, which is uh, year three. And because of that, I'm currently applying for masters uh, in UCD and further abroad. And the one I've set my heart on at the minute is the masters, masters in Architecture, Urbanism and Climate Action. And um, what else have I been in UCD? Well, I've also been a peer mentor, which you would describe as a prefect in secondary school. So basically being a, a friendly face and to help settle in first years when they come into UCD in September. Um, I'm also proud to be a UCD Ad Astra Academy Academic Scholar and a University Scholar for Stage 2 of my programme as well. Um, and I'm also an active member of UCD PEPSOC, which is the planning society here in UCD. Um, so what will I be talking to you about today? Well, I must mention that when I was making this presentation last week, I did struggle to understand what you would want to know and uh, like what got you up out of bed this morning to listen to me of all people. Um, like, I mean, it's not as long ago since I was in your own position at this open day, albeit in person, but wanting to know answers to all my burning questions. Um, but I completely forgot what those questions were. So, but uh, luckily for you guys, um, I have a brother who is currently in the same position as yourselves. And funnily enough, he is next door on the UCD geography talk at the minute. But I asked him what he would want to know if he was in this uh, talk. Um, so if I don't answer any of your questions, you can blame him, not me. So that's just a little disclaimer for you. Um, but what did we come up with? Well, firstly, I'll talk to you about um, why I chose the course. So what hobbies and interests interests and expectations I had about the course. I'll go on to talk about the course, some of the modules you'll take, assignments, and then the field works and field trips that you expect to go on. And then I'll briefly talk about the university, such as the facilities, extracurricular activities like sports and societies, and briefly about the scholarships as well. 
before I go on to my final comments. So, first of all, 13 reasons why I chose the course. And as you can see on the slide, I won't be talking about the Netflix series. I only have 15 minutes uh, to talk to you today. But it just so happened that I thought of 13 reasons why I chose the course and saw an opportunity to get a cheap laugh. So all I can say is you're welcome. Um, yeah, so first of all, um, city planning was not my first choice. Um, I had my heart set on architecture. But um, this just goes to show that uh, your first AO choice does not mean that it's your only choice, nor does it mean that it would be your favorite choice. And I'm testament to that because I love city planning and environment policy. I love what I do at the minute. So just keep your options open. That's all I'd say to you. Uh, the course applies an interdisciplinary approach. So a wide range of subjects and modules are taught across the college, not just in planning. So it's perfect if you're undecided about what you want to do in the future. So you get a taste of everything, um, which is great. And from a personal point of view, I loved drawing, design, and geography. I come from quite an artsy background. Um, but that doesn't mean that you have to be good at these subjects. I'm just giving you a flavor that if you like these subjects, you're more than likely will go going to love the course. Um, going on, as you can see from our picture, um, this, that's my course. And it's a small course size. So in my course, there's only 25 of us. I think if I'm not mistaken, we're taking in 31 this year. So it's not as big of a transition from secondary school to college. And you really do feel that because you get to know everyone. It's a close knit kind of community. You're guaranteed to make friends and it lends itself to more time at the field, as you can see here in Market House Square in Dublin. And um, fifth of all, the workload, it's not as intense as other courses. So for example, architecture, you're in pretty much every day, nine to six every day in studios. But in uh, city planning environment policy, you approximately work about 12 hours a week uh, at lecture times. So it allows you to work, socialize, and manage your time better and cooperatively with the course. But what I'd say is don't be mistaken, it's not a DOS course. Uh, work is needed to put in to succeed. And then in terms of employability, the multidisciplinary approach that I talked about lends itself to a high employability value. And as Francesco said, it's recognized by the Irish Planning Institute and Royal Town Planning Institute. Um, I'll talk about uh, this a little bit later, but I also chose the course because of use of these exceptional services and amenities, as I'm sure you all know, and city planning environmental policy zones facilities in rich years, uh, Francesca was also uh, briefly talked about. It's a nice, quiet, secluded uh, area from away from the busy main campus. So if you enjoy that peace and quiet, um, rich view is for you. The open day. So when I went to the open day, it only feels like yesterday, as I say. Um, it changed my perspective and opened my idea to planning. I don't think it was yourself, Francesca, who was talking. I think it was uh, Mick Lennon, who was also a lecturer on the course. And he gave, gave a great speech and it really changed my perspective and opened my, idea, and my mind to the idea of planning. And he was really, really nice and friendly and inviting. And I hopefully you feel the same way about us. Um, but yeah, uh, and it's also something different. Like the course is unique. Um, coming from a Chelsea fan, it, I call it the Mourinho course because I believe it's the special one. It's the intermediary between all these different subjects. So you get the taste for everything. Uh, and just a word of advice from my own personal experience, don't be afraid to do something different. In my own, uh, for myself, I am the only one who goes to UCD from my own secondary school. And I thought I'd be lost, but I'm not. Like, I see constantly see friends going to the same course together, going to the same college together because they want to be with each other. But what I'll say is you don't have to follow the crowd. Just be yourself. And I also wanted to make a difference. Like, as I say on the slide here, listen to our new US president and thank God he's our new one, but I won't get into that. Um, but yeah, planning helps us to give the ability to make a difference in our society and environment. True inequalities in our cities, physical um, developments, uh, the climate crisis, even the COVID crisis, planning has a role to play in that. And then in terms of opportunities, you have opportunities to work in the public and private sector, the non-governmental organisations, intergovernmental organisations like the UN, the EU, and you have the chance to study and work abroad, which is always great. But ultimately, I wanted to have fun. And as you can see, here, here's myself and a couple of uh, my mates on the course at one of the Fridays for Future climate strikes in Marion Square. And here we are um, making a difference uh, with the climate uh, crisis at the minute, doing stuff within our own course, but also having fun while doing it. As you can see, we're a beautifully made poster uh, referencing Father Ted. But 
Um, yeah, so secondly, uh, the course itself. So just following on from what Francesco was talking about, this is just a quick overview of the course. It's a three-year course, so that's 24 weeks each year, split into two semesters each, so tw uh, which is 12 hours a week, as I've explained. Um, there's a wide, wide range of subjects taught, as I've said, and I'll bring that through you then next, in the next slide. And then each year you have approximately 10 core modules and two elective modules, again, split six each semester. And I think it's important to understand what elective modules are. What they essentially are, are option modules. So in secondary school, you know, you have your core modules in maths, Irish and English, and then you have your option modules from the science subjects and the business subjects. These are exactly what they are, but on a college level. So for example, in first year, I did a, a elective module in physics. Nothing got to do with city planning, but, UCD allows me to do it because it's unique to UCD in Ireland. So it's just something to think about as well when you go to choose. So this is uh, some of the modules that um, we do in the, in the course. And I won't bring you through all of them. I'd be here all day. But the ones I've highlighted in black and with the asterisks beside them are the ones I really liked. So in first year, this history of city planning, uh, urban design, inequality in Irish society, and then the studios in first year and second year were really, really good as well. Uh, a quick mention to Smart Cities, which is also run by Francesco, which was really, really good and really fascinating. And then in terms of third year this year, what I'm doing at the minute is such things as transport and sustainability, which I'm really uh, enjoying at the minute. I'm, I'm passionate about planning and it's role in site and diversity. So that's really nice to uh, think about as well. So the types of assignments and work done, um, well, this is first year work, that I've done in urban design. So this was a townscape analysis um, of a street in Dublin. And as you can see here, this was St. Patrick's Cathedral down here and Christchurch, if you're familiar with Dublin. And I was just looking at the paths and the districts and the um, nodes and the landmarks and the ground and upper floor use. So the basic uh, things that go into the urban fabric of the city. And then I was just going around taking pictures and that goes into a final report then. In terms of second year, this is um, GIS. So we're interpreting CSO data and producing maps and graphics using that data. So looking at such things as housing stock rates in Dublin, Cork, noise pollution in Dublin. And then this was a group project looking at um, populations and industry uh, in South Dublin and then Kildare as well. So it's just examining and getting a, a feel for the software that planners use as well. So that was in second year. Um, and move on to the next slide. Yeah, so this was, hopefully this will play. Um, oh, it won't play, but anyway, this was the time lapse that we did in um, Smart Cities, which was the uh, class that was run by Francesco. So he gave us this little device that measured uh, air pollution, noise pollution, light, all these different things. And he was using them for his own research as well, but he gave this these little ones and said, go out and do a project, do whatever you want. Uh, so my group decided to investigate the comparative air quality between in interior and the exterior of UCD buildings. Um, so this was outside the sports centre and we just measured the air quality of, the, of inside the sports centre and outside the sports centre. And we logged what was going past. So as you can see here, here's a car. Um, so we just logged what was going past every 30 seconds, uh, a minute or so. But we decided to do something different and make, make a time lapse, which was really a, an innovative way of making sure that we had everything logged in. So when we went to interpret the data, and I think Francesco really liked it as well, which was a bonus. Um, so this was also in second year, and this is pretty much the mothership of um, the assignments that you do in the, in the course. This, uh, this was in the local planning studio, and this was a full scale town analysis. So I showed you what a street scale town analysis is in first year with urban design, but this was a full town of RD and County Loud. And it came in uh, four steps. So the first one was looking at development plans of, of Loud County Council and the local area plans and different kind of plans. I mean, produced a 12,000 word report, the whole class um, about all the things that you would need to know about RD. Um, and then we went out on to RD on Valentine's Day this year. I know normally you'd go to Paris or Rome or something on Valentine's Day, but no, we went to the romantic capital of RD in County Loud. Um, I hope no one's from Loud or RD. It's a lovely place, I, I, I assure you of that. But um, yeah, it was it was great though. Uh, it was really good, really good, good crack. Like um, we examined such things as 
as I said, like the paths, the edges, the districts, and the nodes and the landmarks. But then we also looked at um, safety, looking at the inclusivity of the town. So does it discriminate against women, children, disabled, elderly people, things like that. And then we came back to UCD and produced a SWOT analysis. So looking at the strengths and the weaknesses of the town, the opportunities and the threats. And then that informed our, our vision for the future of RD. So what we'd envisioned RD to look like in 10, 20 or 30 years time. And that was really, really good. It was a full scale kind of project. And then in terms of third year, I don't have that much to say because I, I'm currently um, doing these type of things at the minute. So in terms of climate policy and politics, we're examining and critiquing international and national environmental policies. So my own group is looking at New Zealand's climate action policy analysis and how their targets um, in terms of greenhouse gas emissions comply with the Paris Agreement 2016, stuff like that. Then in terms of environmental management, we're looking at global environmental problems. So my own group is looking at ocean acidification and coral bleaching and how market-based instruments can help. And I actually have that presentation on Monday, which I need to um, finish up. Uh, so that's a little reminder for myself. But yeah, also in terms of planning society and diversity, we're looking at current societal issues that pose challenges to planning and how planning can be the solution to such. So for example, for myself, I was looking at education and equality in Dublin, taking all different towns and villages from across Dublin and getting their percentage of 20 year olds in full time education. And as you can see here, there's a clear and obvious problem, with education and equality. So I just talked about stuff like that. In terms of field work and field trips, in first year, we went to Glendalough uh, with UCD geography, history and archaeology and did a whole project in Glendalough. I've already talked about RD in Dublin City Centre. And then I also went last year to Stony Batter to look at how that has developed throughout um, the 20th century and into today. Um, briefly about the university, so um, the facilities, so like libraries, we have the biggest library, UCD has the biggest library in Ireland in the form of James Joyce Library, which is four, four uh, floors um, big. And then we also have su such things as healthcare. So we have our own pharmacy, we have our own doctor on site, counselling services, therapists. So UCD really looks after its students. And then in terms of sport and fitness, UCD is famous for it and um, with its own Olympic swimming pool, the elite sports gym, its own gym, GAA pitches, hockey pitches, I could go on and so uh, go on for ages about them. Uh, and then the same for shops and restaurants, there are plenty on site, so you won't go hungry. Um, in terms of societies and sports clubs, there are over 80 societies and 50 sports clubs in UCD. So everything from juggling and circus society to Harry Potter society who play Quidditch on the GAA pitches to film society, which is really, really good as well. And orienteering and CPAC Takra, which is a, it's a, a weird blend of volleyball and football from Asia. And but one of the one the newest uh, societies is UCD Pepsoc, or the planning society. And as I said, I'm a member. Uh, and we hold such events such as coffee mornings, nights out, movies and game nights. Uh, but in the current climate, obviously, the dreaded Zoom quizzes we'll have to do for now. Um, but we also use a networking forum. So we get to meet others in our own course in different years. Uh, Gain on your uh, perspectives on, uh, on subjects through that. And we obviously make new friends. And we get to attend conferences and panel discussions. So last year, unfortunately, I wasn't able to go. But... They went up to Belfast for a panel discussion, but we also had the panel discussion as part of planning week uh, last Thursday on transport, which was really, really good over Zoom. And then you get to gain contacts in the field from guest speakers and stuff, and it's us useful and valuable experience. There's their Facebook and uh, Instagram handle if you want to have a look at what, we, what sort of things we also do as well. In terms of scholarships, there's a wide range of scholarships that are offered, but the biggest one which I'm prepared to be a part of is UCD Ad Astra Academy. Uh, and I'm a part of the academic strand. So there's three, uh, the other two strands are elite sports and performing arts. In terms of financial benefit, there's a 3,000 euro stipend, which can be put towards your fees, uh, your accommodation, or can be used as a bursary. In terms of getting in, in first year, you have to achieve a, uh, six H1s in your leaving certificate. But that's not the only way you can get in. You can go in the same way I came in, which is after first year, if you achieve a first class honours or a 3.68 GPA, they invite you to apply and you go through an application process interview and then they can offer you a, a place but it's great because uh, you get loads of mentoring support you get access to the scholars room so we have netflix in there we have free coffee and um, free food 
free printing, which also comes in handy. But they also run events such as personal and professional development classes and, and nights out. So we've gone bowling, we've gone escape rooms. So you really get to know everybody from different parts of uh, uh, different courses around the UCD and you get to make friends for life. So in terms of applications, um, they're open from the 1st of February to 22nd of August next year for the academic strand. But for the elite sports and performing arts strand, that's already open and it closed on 31st January 2021. There's their website, their email and their um, number there if you want to find out more. Uh, and then really quick conclusion. Um, so what have I gotten from um, City Planning Environmental Policy in UCD and what's next? What's for the future? Well, I've received a deep and comprehensive, unique and fun educational experience as I've talked about and I can honestly say that I've received great uh, mentoring and support, uh, support whenever I've needed it from lecturers, from the programme office, from uh, UCD Ad Astra Academy as well. And I've gained a new lease of wanting to make a difference on our, in our own world. And I've included just a little gif of one of my idols, David Attenborough, who at his age at 94, uh, is constantly wanting to make a difference in terms of biodiversity and climate change. So I can only look up to him in that sense. Um, and you gain a broad network of contacts in the field. So you're not left after you graduate, that, uh, left on your own. You have contacts to get references, internships, employment opportunities. So it's really, really re good. And I've also ultimately gained friends for life, um, which, which is so true. And then plenty of options and opportunities for the future. So in terms of the future, as I said before, I'm currently applying to master's programs in UCD, but I'm also looking further afield in Cardiff, in England, in the Netherlands, um, to have a look, keep my options open. And that I'll see where that takes me, pretty much. Um, but after I get my master's, I can expect to be employed in a range of different sectors, as I've talked about, due to the high employability value of such courses. So thanks for listening. I'll leave you there. Best of luck with everything, whether it be the leaving certificate, whatever. I know it's a really difficult time, especially in today's current climate. And I hope to see you in UCD and uh, City Planning Environmental Policy next year. I'll leave my email there. If you have any questions after afterwards, you can always email me. And um, remember the number four after my name. Otherwise, if you forget that, some other poor unfortunate soul with the same generic name as myself in UCD will also receive that email. They won't know what you're talking about. So thanks for listening and cheers. I think just in the chat there was one or two that um, we'll, we'll get through first. Uh, maybe Francesco, you can talk through maybe what's the division or what's the split between how much say um, city planning and how much um, more environmental policy and how much of it is more um, kind of policy related, I suppose, is I think what the person was asking. Well, I guess you see that the, the first year will be quite broad. So oh, they, 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 actually the, all the students will, uh, will have the same classes, but it, it, in all the students in the degree will have the same classes but then from the second year there are more specific um, modules so the students will be able to choose basically their path and see if they want to focus more uh, on the planning side or on the environmental policy side uh, so there is um, the, the last part of the question was more uh, it was uh, how much is about policy wasn't it uh, so there are uh, it's not all about policy because it is about also understanding as i said impacts uh, on the local environment it is about understanding local uh, the needs of the local communities so oh, i i would say uh, it's a uh, um, the policy a uh, part that comes more at the end when when whenever you're bringing in all the learnings together so it's more about learning skills so it's not just about policy Right, and then Luke, from a student perspective, did you find that you had um, a good split and a good choice between what you'd like to study as part of the course? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Francesco has really hit in, on the head there, like that you do study a lot of basic planning in first year, and then you kind of delve into the policy aspects in second year, and then third year at the minute, as I said, uh, with one of my classes, we're looking at international policies and national policies. So you will have to uh, expect to look at certain policies and certain documents and a lot of that basic kind of, you know, nitty gritty stuff. Um, but it's done in a really nice kind of fun way. Um, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. Great, thank you. And then um, just uh, there was another question in the chat before we go on to the, the kind of Q&A ones is, um, is there international um, or uh, kind of internship or professional experience opportunities in the course, um, Francesco? 
the, 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 the internship, uh, we brought it in just this year, but as part of the, um, of the master. So as part of the master, there'd be the possibility to go for a, for a, um, for a, a trimester internship uh, uh, either in a, um, in a business or in a local authority depending on uh, you know or what's available and also the interest of okay, the student. But, but it's not part of the under sure, no. but it's only part of the master's it's not part of the, yeah. the okay great and then also we got um i think a question just around um people who are maybe interested in study abroad opportunities um or doing kind of an international year is that part of the undergraduate course yes as well? it is so basically there is a there is the option to go for the city planning and environmental policy international which means that, um, well, uh, it means that uh, there will be an additional year, a credit-free ad additional year, which uh, would be spent abroad. So basically, if you choose to, to have an, um, an, an year abroad, you will still cover all the content of the normal degree, which is uh, because of accreditation, but you will have the possibility to spend one year in an institution, either in Europe or um, in, in, the, in the States or in Australia. Okay, great. I think uh, our attendees be very interested to hear about that. It's something I get asked about a lot. Um, and then just in relation to, um, I suppose, uh, when, once you graduate from the course or the career opportunities, um, Francesca, do you have a feel for maybe where the students have gone? How many of them maybe would have pursued a, a master's before going to industry um, or where they've gone straight into to industry or to, to career opportunities after the undergrad? Well, I would say there is a um, there is a good a good number of students that would go for the for the master afterwards, but the um, the career opportunities after the degree would be both uh, in uh, a consultancies in international companies, but also in uh, in local and national authorities. So there be there be scope for for jobs uh, in, in in different sectors. Right. Um, and then, uh, Luke, I might throw this one to you. It's just in relation to, I suppose, how you're examined or how, how you get your marks for the course. Do you find a lot of it's continuous assessment or is there more formal exams at the end of a, a trimester? Most of it is uh, a continuous assessment, which I prefer. Um, but there are, there are some uh, examinations. Uh, now, I haven't had one since first year. Uh, now, I think COVID has had an impact on that. But... Uh, you don't ex you shouldn't expect to get as many uh, examinations as you would in other courses. Most of it is continuous assessment, assignments throughout the year, presentations, uh, group projects. So yeah. Okay, great. Thank you so much. And um, that's really good to to hear. And I think a lot of students would like the fact that there's more continuous assessment than exams um, as part of the course. I think. Um, that's something that most students are, are interested in. Um, so just a question around, um, I suppose, design opportunities in the course. Um, is there design work that would be a part of the curriculum? Um, and, uh, or, or is there a lot of studio work or that kind of thing? Um, yeah, so uh, you do urban design, uh, urban design module in first year, as I, I've talked through that. You also do stu a studio in the second semester of first year as well, looking at planning applications and development plans and stuff like that. And uh, then second year as well, you do a, a big studio, as I talked about with RD. Now you go through different different other towns, it's not always RD. Um, and then you go through all that. And then we also have an urban design module this year as well in third year. So there's plenty of design, plenty of studio, um, not as much as architecture, of course not, um, but you will expect to be a little bit of design, a little bit of studio work as well. Okay, great. And then just because you mentioned architecture, there was a question around um, someone who's maybe interested in architecture and planning, and is there a way to um, get into the architecture course and the planning course? And unfortunately, they're quite different courses, so there wouldn't be the opportunity to transfer. But maybe you could speak to, is there any overlap as far as content or, or courses that you would do with the architecture students? Um, or maybe, you know, what would set it a, a, apart from the architecture course as far as interest goes? Uh, for, oh, oh, for Luke, okay. Yeah, I, I don't mind you. Um, like, uh, we do a module with the landscape architecture students in first year. Um, but in terms of architecture students, as Laura said, it's a very different course. Um, but as I said, I'm applying to the Masters in Architecture, Urbanism, Climate Action. So it's a, a way for me to uh, study architecture. So it might be an opportunity for yourself as well. Um, 
so you, you get to study architecture tr- through a master's, but also not forgetting about your planning um, kind of background as well with the other undergraduate and the climate action part with the environmental policy as well. Okay, yeah, I think that's really interesting. And then there was just another question around what's the intake every year, how many students we take in. And then I know we have small class sizes and so maybe Francesca, you wanted to expand on uh, why it's beneficial that we have small class sizes and, and why that's good for students. Okay, so basically the, the intake for this year is between 25 and 30. It is a small class, class size which allows us to, to interact more with the students. It allows us also, the, it allows for the practitioner coming in to interact more with the students. So there is a more, a, there are more one-to-one interactions between the, the lecturers and the students. So I, I guess this is way better than a course that has 300 students where the, the, the teach, the, the lecture is just a person standing at, on a podium far away. So there'd be more direct interactions with all the lecturers and, as I said, with the practitioners that were coming in. Yeah, great. That's really good. Um, and then just there was someone asking about a third language requirement. Um, we don't require a third language for a city. It's just um, English, Irish, maths um, and a third or whatever, three other subjects, I think. Um, at no particular level once you're getting the points requirement to actually get into um, And then I suppose, uh, Luke, for yourself, just what did you find as the, the best part of the course and maybe what you found as, as a hard part of the course or what, what advice you'd give to students? Um, yeah, there's a, I wouldn't pinpoint one particular thing as the best part of the course. Like the, there's so many good aspects to the course that I really like. Um, like the studio work, as Francesco says, like the, there's, it's more of a kind of secondary school kind of class feel to it because of the small course, course size, which is quite a good part because you get to make so many new friends. And I said, I, I have friends for life now because, because of the small cl- course size. Um, but the hardest part, oh, I don't know, um, probably group projects. Um, they, 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 do, they do tend to be an, an awful lot more work than the individual assignments um, from, from the God honest troop. But um, yeah, I w- it's not too big of a worry, you know. Great. Um, and then I think there was a couple more questions. Um, someone asked about DARE places. So for city planning environment policy, we have two places set aside for DARE applicants and two for HERE applicants as well, uh, just so you're, you're aware of that. And they give, um, I think they give um, preferential treatment to people who qualify for both HERE and, and DARE as well. Um, and then uh, just a question around certification. I know, Francesca, you mentioned about the accreditation as part of your presentation. So maybe you just wanted to expand on that and maybe what that actually means for a student. This this particular person was asking about the possibility of working in the US, I suppose, with this particular course. Well, uh, look, the, the accreditation, it, it will allow you, uh, it will allow, it, well, it's an accreditation from a professional body. So it means that whenever you go out uh, in the work environment here in Ireland, it, you will be recognized uh, as, a, as a fully accredited uh, planner. So that's uh, why it is uh, why it is uh, critical to have this kind of accreditation as part of this degree. So as uh, for um, if we uh, about the question if we, we would allow to go um, and work in the in the states, I would say well uh, definitely the skills that you learn definitely yes. Then you'll have to look if in the states will uh, they would request a different kind of accreditation, which I, I guess just to be on the safe side. Okay, yeah, that's good to know. Um, I think we have time for just one more question. So I thought I'd, I'd throw it out to yourself, Francesco. Um, obviously, UCD will be a heavily research um, intensive university and yourself will be involved with research. Um, I suppose how much of, of research would inform teaching and does the curriculum change based on you know, what's going on in the world and based on research um, and, and that kind of thing? Well, I can use uh, as an example my smart city module that look at the <laughs> the joy to to be part of i, I guess uh, so it's uh, in that module i'll try to bring in uh, the research that um i do as part of my european projects so that the students can uh, get to to play and to interact with the uh, with tools uh, concepts uh, and know-how that it's developed as part of, of uh, these research, research projects uh, it's uh, there, there are things that uh, more than likely will be implemented in, uh, in policies or uh, um, work environments in uh, five, three to five years. So that allows the students always to be a step ahead 
of other uh, other students that have been learning from more traditional material. So they get to, as part of my module, as an example, they get to play also with sensors that they are on an early stage, uh, still in research stage, which, well, uh, gives also the students a bit of trouble because sometimes they are not so straightforward to use, but I think that's part of the fun. Yeah, great. Um, thank you so much to you both for, for giving your presentation today. I hope our attendees got a great insight into the course and hopefully piqued people's interest and they're going to want to uh, apply to it and come into us in the next couple of years. 